Today we've got a special review. It's going to be on the horns, knife and tool, wind specifically. Um, this is kind of what the box looks like. That's right, made in China. Uh, our steel type is going to be 14C28N. Uh, supposed to be a really cool uh, uh, rust resistant steel uh, stainless variety type. Get you in for a close up. Wow, that is really cool. It's got kind of this a smooth G10 texture, very similar if you've handled uh, a Spyderco uh, Patata. This smooth G10 style's gotten really popular within the years. I do have it on left side carry because that's how I prefer to carry uh, small knives. Uh, anything that's, you know, five inches or larger, reference cold steel type knives, th those I'll call larges. So typically I'll carry a small on my left and a large on my right. But I like to have a small handy knife. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and flick it open. Um, it's a very uh, responsive knife. When I saw the pictures and I read the reviews, guys absolutely loved it. I'm gonna go ahead and flick it out again, set it right there like that, kind of move it around. Um, I got excited about it because to me, this knife was uh, what I've been looking for and what I feel like uh, the market needed. It's very common for blades to gain popularity and not necessarily based off of the merits that make a knife useful. And I feel like this knife has a utility potential. I feel like it's a very handy knife. It's got a very purposeful blade shape and handle. I feel like sometimes things can kind of become trendy in the knife community where people aren't necessarily buying a knives based off of that alone. Now that's not to say that this doesn't have style. I think it's got style in total, you know, aces all across the board. It is a Chinese made blade and it used to be that if you got a blade made in China, uh, it wasn't a good thing. Early 90s, you got a knife from China, it was 440C steel. And from what I can determine in the blade community, the 440C steel that they were using back in those days wasn't necessarily a true spec 440C steel. And apparently a lot of that technology to produce that supposed grade of steel, the United States sold them all that steel production proprietary techniques back in the 80s. So they were really using an outdated technique of producing 440C steel, and the quality levels were not the same as they are today, or an American grade 440C. The reason I bring that up is because quality with Chinese knives has vastly improved. They're using steel types that are all sorts of premium grade steel. So both the quality of the steel and the uh, quality controls of the knives have increased. I'll always be a firm believer that if um, there's something of good quality and also value, that that's what I'm gonna go with as a consumer. Um, I do try and support American-made businesses, but if there's something that's made in Germany, China, uh, you know, Sweden, I don't mind spending my money there as long as the uh, tool uh, serves the end user in, in its field or specifications. That's all that matters. Basically, what we have here is a flipper style blade. It's got um, little tiny jimping on this little flipper. And so you basically just hold it steady and go ahead and give it a flick. So this knife is a super smooth knife. Everyone that I've let see it, I actually um, bought one of these for a buddy and he absolutely loved it. That's one thing about this knife um, that I think is just outstanding. It's a, a I, th I believe I paid $35 for this knife, okay? And really that would be a good deal. For this knife though, in the way they executed all of the fine details on this knife, it's an excellent deal. Very, very well made to quality controls that I would say rival big name knife companies. I'm talking Spyderco, I'm talking Benchmade. This, this knife really has hit the mark in terms of achieving a knife with fantastic quality controls. This knife's pivot system runs on a bearing system, okay? That's what provides it the smoothness that it has. Also, we can take a look real quick. You can see that the lock engagement's early. Some guys won't like that, some guys will. 
I'll tell you this, I like it. And my reasoning behind this is if it's engaging early, it has room to wear. So as the knife is deployed, cyclic motion creates wear. And so that liner starts off like this and it will start moving over as the knife wears. Years of use. I like the fact that this starts off early. It's liner lock is gonna have a, a longer lifespan than a knife that say engages all the way over. Now, I'm not gonna get too specific on that because the truth is, is sometimes liner locks that engage all the way over, they'll actually come up to a stop. And so it prevents them from moving really any further. Uh, so it's not a, a thing to get too hypercritical about, but I like the fact that it engages early. That's fantastic. It's a captured liner lock. It, meet, it butts up against the G10 grip scales. And let's go back in and talk about those grip scales while we look at those lines. I mean, it's got lines. It, it, it almost has a similar shape to a Chris Reeves Sabenza. I mean, there's this kind of general body shape in terms of the way that the grip is kind of cut out. It's not, you know, identical, but there, there are similar um, themes with the body. And we see how the uh, Sabenza, this is a small Sabenza, I believe it's the Wilson Combat version. Uh, see how the Sabenza blade tucks in as does this? This is obviously uh, a more straighter transition, okay? But it's it's uh it's very similar and these uh cutouts that you see i'm gonna go ahead and take the sabins away these cutouts immediately what stuck out in my mind when i saw these sort of uh milled uh lines the whole body of the knife to me it screamed 940 osborne benchmade okay it kind of has that that osborne you know sort of uh appearance you guys seeing how i'm drawing that conclusion kind of a 940 osborne sort of look wouldn't you agree and just because we're here this is the 940 osborne this is the harley davison edition and i've got buddies that just absolutely love the 940 osborne and if you guys would like me to review either of these knives i could do that in a separate review this knife i say it wholeheartedly um has a lot of the same merits as these big name brands identical in the sense that if you didn't tell someone that this knife cost $35, they would think that you just bought them a high dollar knife. They, they would not be able to tell. Um, the, the average knife user would not be able to tell. So once again, I, I really think that this is an awesome knife because of its budget friendliness. And a lot of guys that I run into, they'll say, hey, I really like that knife. So I'm gonna bring the 940 back out for reference, okay? They'll say, oh man, this is a cool knife. They'll start playing with it. And then when they ask about price, hey man, how much can I get one of those for? And then you drop the price tag on them and you say, oh, well, it's about, you know, a buck 70, 200, something like that. Immediately, that's not an option. They're totally not interested at that point. To them, it's crazy to spend that amount of money. So generally, when I run into that, I'll be talking with a, a friend and we'll be talking about knife price ranges and stuff like that. And so it basically what it comes down to is they don't want to spend over 50 bucks for a knife, okay? This is a knife that is $35. Um, dollars. I bought mine off Amazon.com. But so I think that with all of the attributes that this knife possesses, this knife's going to have a very uh, outstanding report with people that end up holding this, end up using it, are going to end up loving it. And sometimes things like that, they reach critical mass to where, you know, enough people are using something that it gets standing legacy. It becomes well known. Um, so I... I really like this uh, anodized pivot. That is just cool. I mean, it sets off the yellow grips. Now, the reason I got yellow, okay, if you guys saw my Ridley X-Trail video, yeah, believe it or not, I got yellow because honestly, I don't have enough knives that are high visibility. So I do have a Spetterco Salt one, um, and I feel like, you know, this knife is has some level of rust resistance clearly not as much as a dive knife in H1. This is a quick deploying knife that can easily be secured on my persons and it's lightweight. This is 
three ounces. For me, I like a lightweight knife because like I told you earlier, generally I'm carrying on me a small knife for utility purposes, something that, that won't uh, immediately scare people in a work you know environment where it might not be a blade friendly environment. The reason I like weight is because I'm generally carrying a lot of stuff. I'm carrying a Leatherman, I'm carrying a flashlight, I'm carrying a bigger blade, I'm carrying a wallet and a cell phone. I wanna keep it lightweight, I wanna keep it simple. And also if I'm doing something that would be um, considered just uh, trying to have a casual day and, and, and be a minimalist going out to the movies in a pair of dress pants with the wife. Okay, something like this would fill this role fantastically. This could easily blend into a gentleman's carry knife. It's not, a, you know, some kind of a Rambo knife, okay, with a really aggressive G10. This is a, a more smooth uh, G10. Once again, that's going to be better for the purposes of not wearing out your pockets, right? Sometimes those aggressive G10s can wear out your pockets. This is, you know, going to keep those dress pants looking nice. Um, deep carry pocket clip. I'm honestly not a fan of deep carry pocket clips. Um, I don't mind them. Now with this deep carry pocket clip, yeah, it's possible someone could see this and mistaken it for a pen in your pocket or possibly a flashlight or a money clip or, or just something like that. It, it does carry uh, very nicely. Um, no, no problems there. I don't mind concealability, but I'm not, I'm not someone that gets uh, bent up about, you know, uh, deep carry. Uh, by way of reference, I'll bring out a, um, a bird. Uh, I want to say it's a finch. It might be a sparrow. Okay. So let's say that that seats in your pocket and it comes out that much. Uh, it's not a deal breaker. Right? It doesn't bother me that this rides that much higher. Um, one thing that I really wanted to show you guys really, really was impressed with the, uh, jimping. I believe this jimping is really, really well done. I mean, I, it's, a, it's up there with big name brands. Uh, it's very clean lines. Um, Let's take you into the jimping on the top side. I mean, they're, they're very cleanly, very cleanly cut into the blade and liner. Another thing I kind of wanted to show you guys in more detail was the lines of the blade. You see how there's like, there's like that flat right there, okay? And then you have like, it, it almost makes it look like the blade is swelling out almost. Okay, kind of a, a Scandinavian kind of grind, kind of a bush crafting kind of shape, a very, very, very purposeful draw point, just well done, very well executed. Uh, another thing I wanted to show you was these lines, the, the spine of the knife, okay, it has a very smooth edge. It, they, they basically melted this edge up here. One thing that's good about having a lot of blades is you kind of get more of a well-rounded idea of what you like in a blade and uh, a more well-rounded grasp on different types of blades and structures. On the other side of the spectrum, you have people that become more of what I would call knife snobs, okay, where they, they start becoming, you know, uh, hypercritical about things. But the reason I bring this up is I think this is a really cool, a really cool way to do the spine of a blade. Sometimes when you're, you're bearing down on something, you don't necessarily want flat edges because that can create blisters on your thumbs if you're, you're doing a lot of cutting or pressure cutting. So I just think that that's important to note. I, by way of reference, I'm going to go ahead and bring out the, the Sabinza and I'm gonna bring out the uh, 940 Osborne. So if we look at the 940, you have just a straight up flat um, edge. Now this might be good, for example, uh, shaving a, a ferro rod, you know, if you're in that kind of bushcrafting, you know, survival scenario, or possibly if you really had to scrape something like paint um, or something soft, you know, you, you might find uh, it more, more useful, okay, to have that flat, nice, sharp edge on the blade, okay? Now, if we look at the Sabenza 21 and you look at this edge, it's completely rounded, okay? Which is really, really um, refreshing because not a lot of companies really do that kind of thing. You see that you have a nice wide hollow grind 
you have that fine jimping, okay? Which, like I said, the Hearn's Wind has that same kind of jimping. It is a very, very well done type of jimping. Oh, very clean cuts, very clean lines. So, like I said, there, there, there are these different spine okay spine grind patterns for different reasons and i think that they broke the edges on this and it means that you can get up there on that blade and really really do some cutting okay the uh jimping on this really really well done excellent excellent job i'm going to show you an example of what i consider to be terrible jimping this is the bird Kara Kara. this is the first generation some of you guys remember this uh this is a blade that goes back um this was spider co's first attempt they were very successful okay at marketing these because this was basically became known as the poor man's endura and it was a fantastic blade and it was really the first time i saw a lot of usage of the 8 cr 13 mov which is now a widespread known um middle road steel that's really good okay but let's look at that jimping on there there we go you see how you see how this is a very uh bold very coarse type of jimping not only that if we look at kind of the grooves that they put in um it's kind of rough it's kind of it's not cleanly done i don't know if the blade was stamped you know, uh, with a high pressure stamping machine. Um, and it's kind of the same story right here. I mean, it's not, it's, it's a rounded type of jimping still functional and it's a coarser style of jimping. So the, the variables that factor into traction are always changing. I mean, you know, if you think about tires, okay. And tread patterns, different scenarios are gonna play in. Oh, and I'm going to bust out that the, uh, the bird you can see how that's kind of a very coarse type of jimping okay uh i think they did a really good job on that one of the negatives that i i noticed if you're handling this a great deal if you're playing with it a lot or if you're um you know kind of uh uh using it in a high pressure um application i don't mean like a high stress situation i'm just talking about like if you're actually gripping it very strongly if you look at the um edges of the the hilt okay if if you look at that uh this is kind of a sharp transition i mean if we, if we just look at it this way and then if you look at that that's kind of a sharp transition you would just have to feel it in hand but i mean Look at that angle right there. So that's the only negative that I've kind of found about it. I kind of find that, you know, in the crook of my hand right there, you know, when I'm handling it, I can really feel it. I would have liked it had they smoothed this out. Like, th that's the only negative. And you can see why, you know, that, that whole thing happened. You have a relatively flat transition. You don't necessarily have... Uh, melted edges. I'm going to bring out the Sabenza again for reference. You see how Chris Reeves does this chamfering? He melts these edges. This is a very flat style blade. There's not much in the way of, you know, ergonomics. It's not contoured. It's not, it's not a, a rounded, you know, well radius grip, but that little chamfer does matter. Okay. That, those melted edges, it, it definitely factors in it still feels like you're holding you know a chocolate bar in your hand but the grip shape and everything you know the choil kind of plays in so once again really great by very very smooth deployment very fast um, so it has this sort of angle to it okay so it's kind of a push down type of deal okay instead of a push in kind of type of deployment okay very well done the um the retention to me is on point i mean uh the detent perfect i mean it's great it centers perfectly uh to me that's you know about as good as it gets okay that's as good as i need it to get i i think they did a good job on it uh let's take a look at this for a comparison, I think that the CRKT M16s are a really good comparison. The reason is, is because they're both flippers. They're both under a $35 price point. So this is kind of a competitive option. And 
I think these knives, it's not a, a versus type of thing. It's not the, the CRKT M16. By the way, this is the um, M16-01KZ, okay? Now, the reason I'm comparing them, like I said, it's, it's not a versus sort of thing. The reason I compare the two together is the fact that they're both flippers, right? They're both under $35. So, and they both complement each other. That goes back to what I was telling you guys about how owning more than one blade is kind of a good thing. It gives you kind of a broader outlook on what you like and what you don't like. Sometimes guys hold a knife and they hold it for five seconds and they generate, you know, this idea that, and they'll be like, I like it, I don't like it. You know, after a, a couple of seconds. What I tell guys is, hey use it use it for a week let let your let your body adjust to it so when we talk ergonomics okay the more if i use this for weeks and i rotate out to this this is going to tell me something about this the same way this is going to tell me something about this so one thing i noticed was like i said how it's kind of sharp right here those edges kind of, you know, and it's not, it's not bad, okay? It's just every once in a while you can kind of feel it and you're like, eh, right? Okay, but with this, okay, the CRK TM-16, not necessarily the case, you know? It's more, it's more of a rounded shape right here. The edges, if we look at the, the edges on this guy, okay, they're, they're a little bit more rounded, okay? And it does matter. If we're comparing, you know, two blades of equal price and you go, well, okay, cap and knife, why, why is, you know, you keep going off about the jimping and how the metal work is done so fine. Well, let's, let's look at what, you know, the close to the same price will get us. You can kind of see how the metal work right here, I can draw those conclusions. It, it the stamping process, okay, it kind of, it leaves these coarse cut patterns okay it's not they didn't take a sander to this you can actually tell it's it looks kind of unfinished it was good enough you can see how this looks finished how they actually sanded this they painted it so some of that teflon coating is kind of obscuring the finish but you can see the cut patterns from the die press that they used is what i'm guessing the jimping and the metal work okay it, it appears to be good. It's kind of rounded over due to the fact that it's got that Teflon coating. But yeah, overall a great product. The CRKT's got the uh, the whole, you know, auto locking thing. A lot of guys uh, end up disabling that or a lot of guys don't care for it because, you know, if you're talking about a, f a flipper that's fun to deploy and close and just, you know, enjoy it, a lot of guys don't like that because it adds another le level of complexity. Having to, you know, uh, disengage this lock, then disengage this lock, it's not exactly fluid. And I have cut myself a couple of times trying to disengage the, the safety for those that can't chew bubble gum and walk, I can see where this would become annoying. Now, one thing I'll say about their auto locking system, I actually like it. I think that most liner locks, and I believe they build the auto locking system for the purposes of if someone had to use it in a self-defense scenario, or if someone's using it in, in a more harsh use scenario, okay? If they're batoning through tinder, I guess, you know, uh, it, it would have a harder time, okay? There it is, you can see how it moves out of the way and it drops once the blade deploys. So I'll go ahead and do that for you right now. Okay, so see how it did that? It it pops forward and then it engages. So it's an auto engaging safety, okay? And like I said, some guys don't like it. Some guys do like it. For the purposes of playing with the knife, I, I can't say that I really care for it. You know, if I'm just playing with its action, it's not really a fun design. Um, for the purposes of in factory setting where we had to use a knife, had to cut, had to put the knife away. In that environment, we actually did need a blade that we could sheath quickly or holster quickly okay and so something like this an auto engaging safety would not be fun to do and i believe at the time we were using microtex because we could use the the out the front you know switchblade action we could pop it out cut what we needed to cut and quickly 
because it was a very fast paced environment, okay? So I could see where guys would be not fond of the auto lock. Um, but once again, you know, in a self-defense situation, no one's really worried about putting a blade away quickly. I don't think that that's ever happened in the, the spectrum of uh, self-defense scenarios. Again, just brought this out for a reference point for what your money could get you. This is, this is a more refined item, okay? I feel like you're getting a blade that has quality levels associated with a uh, mid-level to top tier knife. To me, this knife, if I closed my eyes, handled it, I would say that's that's easily a hundred and thirty dollar knife. And I'm sure if they upgraded their steel qualities, for example, if this was in CTS uh, BD1 or uh, you know, would take your pick. If it was in your favorite powder metal steel, guys would shell out money for it. I think I've uh, spoken enough about it. Like I said, really fine lines. Uh, very well done pocket clip, no issues there. Um, it works fantastically. You do have the ability to change from left to right. A really great option. I appreciate uh, the likes, subscribes, the comments. I'm very, very grateful. Anyone that's a fan of Cap and Knife is a friend of Cap and Knife.